Okay, so I'm still gonna read this SCP, but we I already know where it's gonna be put. Since it's neutralized. Oh. Alright. S- okay. Yeah, sorry. SCP-654 is a male narwhal. Visually uh, disparate from from others of its species, only in that its characteristic spiral, spiral tusk has grown in a clockwise helix from its jaw, rather than the counterclockwise helix found in all other examined narwhals to date. SCP-654 is able to emit sudden bursts of electrostatic discharge from the apex of its tusk. The discharge is reminiscent of lightning and is accompanied by a loud crack of sound. While not particularly accurate, the tusk can be used to direct the discharge. Oh. Well, we we now know uh, who killed it. I found it. It's Clef, isn't it? It's not Clef. It, okay. it is an anomalous organization by the name of Wilson's Wildlife Solutions. What? And the foundation fined them $50,000 for killing it. I mean, even even then, like, looking at it, like, the conversation is a little bit before that. It wasn't even hurting anyone. It's just a normal that shoots lightning. <laughs> <laughs> but we already know where it's going. It's re- reassigned. It's dead. Poor oh, little baby. <laughs> or should we put it in spooked here? Food. Jerry, Adarna. Give it the respect it deserves. Wait, is Jerry and Adarna here? Yeah, they're on mute. Ah. I'm just gonna... Put... Hatchet! Oh, Why? hi, Hatchet. What a what a wonderful time for my sleep schedule to take a nosedive. What is your uh. username? <laughs> uh, that would be a reference to Cards Against Humanity that I cannot describe in detail because child. Yeah. Oh, I also just noticed a Durnas. Oh. Uh, that is also one, but that's more a reference to Bright's terrible family. Yep. <laughs> yeah, also, um, Hatchet, you missed, uh, uh, I'll read the interview for the last SCP because I think you'll find it funny. For the other SCP, Dr. Sumerian, hello, in your own words, describe yourself. SCP 649 2568J. Well, I like big butts and I cannot lie. Is that it? Yeah, that's it of the interview. <laughs> I was. So I'm sorry that you missed the SCP that was basically a fossil like SCP. Who? You. You missed it. I yeah. see. <clears throat> also, I um, see that we've got some new uh, SCPs in Jerry, or not Jerry, Spoon Tier. Oh, uh, yeah. We decided to put the snake, that that's where the interview was from. Like that interview I just said, we put that in there. Yeah. Honestly, the snake kind of reminded me of Yormandandu. Yeah, because it had it can like reshape mountains, plains, and underwater areas. Yeah, it's it's a juvenile anaconda. 
Yeah, and the other one we decided to put in, which is we just talked about, is a narwhal that can shoot lightning that was neutralized by uh, by Wilson's Wildlife Solutions. What and the fuck? I know. And the foundation to their response to this, uh, find them fifty thousand dollars. Oh, I I can start going out of business then. Who? The animal solution. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was gonna be cleft to be honest. Just fucking cleft. Yeah, I, I, I was I was like anticipating you to say that cleft just like walked <laughs> into its containment at some point and just pulled out a shotgun. <laughs> Honestly, has anyone tried to kill cleft or is that just like They actually when they when uh cleft tried to kill the witch child Dr. Kondraki tried to stop him, but was murdered. <laughs> but kind of brought back to life by the crystalline butterflies, since they really liked him. Oh. Hmm. Has anyone considered just walking into his bedroom with a gun while he was sleeping? No, there's actually is one person that does, like, constantly annoy Dr. Clef. And that is Bright. Of course. <laughs> he finds it hilarious. <laughs> well, Dr. Bright annoys everyone, but that's that's a worthwhile use of Bright's time. Yeah, there was like one time where Dr. Clef went to combat 682 and all of its bull all of his bullets shot out confetti. <laughs> that that <laughs> I mean, Clef w- lived. <laughs> I hope Clef dies. Clef like shoot Clef in his sleep, he'd probably shoot them before they shoot her. Honestly, the day Clef dies in SCP canon is the day I celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize Clef is the only... You know, Clef, uh, the person who, who plays as Clef and created Clef, uh, is the only last remaining... Uh, person who who originally created the site. Everyone else yeah. left. Oh, that's kind of sad. I mean the character. The day that character dies should be a cele- uh, celebrated day. I mean, they still have new people running it. It's just that Clef is only one of the old old people left. He is the only of the old guard. The elders. <laughs> the, Found, the founding fathers of the SCP. Except not racist. What the fuck? Maybe. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> we don't know. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. There's a, there's a lot of ways to be racist without meaning to be. Okay, now I don't want to read this SCP because I know I'm going to be, be made fun of. You're going to fuck gonna up made... some of the words, aren't you? Anyway, read it. All right. Well, right, right. You see, you're going to be made fun of one way or the other. Fine. SCP-659 is a species of bird, resembling oh. a heron. Uh. Family, that's why. Which Even displays a, a modular intelligence. Native to North America, only a single flock of SCP-659 is known although there have been unconfirmed sightings in Europe. SCP-659 is now known to be able to subsist on any form of meat, although whenever possible, it will still consume fish. Mm, When an individual specimen is kept isolated from the flock, it is indistinguishable from, uh, from an ordinary bird. However, when specimens come near each other, each gains the combined intelligence of the group. When even when independent from the group, SCV six five nine is still more intelligent than most species of bird. An isolated SCP six five nine can solve simple problems, use tools, and learn extremely quickly. When in a group, SCP six five nine is capable of escaping all forms of containment the foundation has attempted to use. For this reason, the only effective containment strategy is isolation. 
Research has determined that SP-659 achieves human-level intelligence and sapience when the flock reaches redacted individuals in size. Although the flock is an extra, extraordinary corne, uh, extraordinarily coordinated, extraordinary? whatever, it does not display the properties of an accurate consciousness or hive mind. Beyond the increase in intelligence, there is no telepathic element to their behavior. Descent has also been observed. At this level of intelligence, the flock becomes capable of learning human languages. And iterations of the flock have, in the past, learned to converse in English, Spanish, and French. The flock is capable of even faster learning than an individual, and even a small flock surpasses human learning speed. At this level of intelligence, SP-659 also develops a vigorous hostility to humans. While this behavior was not present when SP-659 was first encountered in the wild, it has been present in every iteration of the flock. That since Incident 659-N. Then the is Incident 659-A. On Redacted, a containment breach at Site Redacted released a flock of redacted specimens of SP-659 resulting in the death of an all on-site personnel with the exception exception of redacted individuals. A few evacuation was mounted a full report of which can, can be found on document S659 redacted. Summarize that the flock prevented any attempt to leave by picking holes in the tires of every single vehicle on site, severing site phone lines and sending a detachment to observe the facility from the air. MTF redacted was dispatched to investigate the sudden communications blackout and eventually establish control with heavy redacted casualties. The observation detachment remains at large. Mm. Plus, right. There's also an inter interview if you want to hear that. Because it does add more insight to it. Is it a reference to me? Highly intelligent bird. All right. Do the birds work with the government? Hush. Interviewed SCP-659-4. Forward. The following interview was conducted af after the site redacted containment breach. The flock was was not yet separated, thus the Foundation decided to, to attempt communication. The interview was separated from the flock by a pane of bulletproof glass. Dr. Redacted conducted the interview. Dr. Redacted. Hello, I am Dr. Redacted. Can you understand me? Actually, I'm just going to call him Dr. S, because I can see the S. Anyway. SCP-659-1. Written. Yes. Dr. S, why did you do this? SCP-659-1. Written. Don't act like we don't know. Dr. S, I don't know. SCP-659-1. Written. You started this. Dr. S. We started this? What did we do to you? SCP-659-1 written. Freedom. After this, SCP-659-1 refused to answer any further questions. Also, able for it to write, it used human blood. Oh. Um... Okay, so are these birds from that one little... Huh? Are these the birds from that really shitty bird movie? I think it was called... Mm, I think it was literally called The Birds. Do you mean Birdemic? Yeah, Birdemic. No, I think... Uh, the thing about Birdemic is I'm pretty sure it was inspired by a different movie about birds that are murderous. Oh, really? Yeah, there was. It's a really old movie. It's actually not that bad. I've seen it. I think Birdemic is the bad one. The one that I'm thinking of is where the old dude dies by being pecked. I actually think I think the movie is just called Bird. Yeah, I, I yeah. It's not like a black and. 
Yes, that one, the black and white one. Yeah, I watched that, and it was actually not that bad. So the bird is interested in watching the movie called Bird. Fuck off. No, no, tell the bird. Oh, the birds. The birds. Okay. Right, you're several birds in a trench coat. Wait, that's why Bright's so bad defensive about being a bird. It's because she's not a bird. She's several birds in a trench coat. Fuck off. Fuck. What if? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Question. Question. What? what was the name of this SCP again? Uh, hold on. I. It is SCP six five nine. Six five nine. Okay. Here's my fan theory. The reason Bright's so defensive about being called a bird is because Bright is actually a flock of 659 that is on the run from the SCP Foundation, and as such being called a bird endangers Bright's well-being. That makes sense. I hate all of you. You piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, this is a question. If the amulet can possess several birds, if they're no. like, they're not a hive mind. It can no. it can only do one entity at a time. Yeah, it could it could potentially it could potentially possess a single one of the individuals in the flock. So there's a head bird. No. No. There's a leader bird. Anyway, where where do you guys think we should put this? I I don't I, I am confused at where to put this. I know it's not reassigned because it's, it's intelligent. Dangerous, but I have no interest in being dangerous. So I'd put this in two tier. Nothing more to hurt people. It just wants to be left the hell alone. Yeah, I would agree. But this is an instance where uh this SCP can almost certainly do no wrong because it is acting out in violence as a direct result to the SCP Foundation being a cockhead. <laughs> it, it's a bird. It's just being a bird. A bad SCP, the bird could technically outdo humans in intelligence and technology, but they don't want to. They just want to be left alone. But they just they just want to be birds. They just want to go and, do their thing. Yeah. And we feed the birds? No. No, oh, I want to feed the birds. I mean, you probably could. Well, they're right. hostile to humans. They don't like them. Who's well, yeah. Them? After what the SCP Foundation did, to you. but but if, <laughs> but if we start if, if we try to make a a, a better uh, sit, I already forgot the number. The if we try to make a better world for these birds, then maybe eventually we humans who are bird friendly can get along with them and be friends. Uh, also, um, this was recently reclassified when I was when I was looking up the the Keters to get the pictures and everything. This was mm -hmm. Keter, and it's been changed to Euclid. Oh, but I'm still going to say what it is. That oh the the one that you're doing, not the birds. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no, no, the birds is Keter. Okay, this one. Okay, the ne next one is Euclid. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know why they. It's it can be something annoying sometimes when they change it, like when I when I get all these SCPs together then they change it. But I can understand. I definitely understand this one, seeing how it is what it is. Mm. SCP six six three is a redacted grand water filtra filtration pitcher. Albeit lacking a serial number and of possessing a slightly narrower top, which lacks the hinge present on the typical redacted pitchers. It appears to be capable of filtering any water bearing solution into clean and drinkable water. Any water produced by SP, SCP 663 is nearly completely deionized. It lacks any distinctive taste. While SP 663 is in the process of filtering, the sound of a faint heartbeat can be heard am animating from the filter core. Additionally, the filtration processes releases several joules of thermal energy per gram of filtered solution. SCP-663's filter reservoir is refilled more than once 
within six hours. SP6 degrees surface rapidly increases in temperature to redacted degrees centigrade. SCP-663 will also begin to gurgle loudly during the heating process after redacted minutes of the thermal runaway state. The human voice can be heard coming from within SCP-663. The voice exhibits clear signs of distress, consistent with drowning, typically screaming and begging that no more water be added to SCP-663. Just sad. If SCP-663 goes more than eight hours without being filled, the same voice will begin to speak from within SP-663. Under circumstances, the voice will again be in distress, this time sounding nobly harsh and pleading for water, amid rasping and wheezing perhaps. A gasp. After redacting minutes of pleading, the voice will begin to scream for help, claiming to be trapped and or lost, as well as dying of thirst. After an additional redacted minutes of screaming, the voice will begin to sob and ask if anyone is there. No action as of yet attempted by the Foundation has allowed for communication with the voice. However, the voice will thank whoever refills the picture, then lapse into the usual silence. It just sounds it. like a really it sounds like a really needy child. Oh why was like someone was no. trapped in a machine, they can't get out, being perpetually stuck in a state of either drowning or being thirsty. Why yeah, it's like torture. I I I, 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 I I feel like I ask this a lot. Why was this ever here? Oh, and in, in the addendum, for some strange reason, instead of pouring water, it, or it poured out cerebrospinal fluid. Ooh. Ew. Gross. After all, think of this. There's literally a person trapped inside. That... Uh, a, a a person being in danger does not make does not make something a keter. That is that's fair. I'm just wondering. I'm guessing they changed it a bit when they turned it to Euclid, because mm. I don't see how this could be a keter. <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's it's tragic. It's a horrifying SCP in terms of like the one person thinking it. Yeah, like thinking about it, like that one guy who's trapped in there and either uh, dying of thirst or drowning. <laughs> I'm just but, wondering like, how they got but, in there. Yeah, but like with the actual ways that SCPs are classified, this just doesn't make sense as a keeper. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I, I. I think we have to assume that it was altered when it was changed to Euclid. What? Like the thing that I was thinking is that like uh to keep the thing like, the thing I was thinking is it sounded like the picture would grow at times. So the first thought was like maybe during certain cer- certain circumstances the picture could just rapidly grow super large and cause damage that way. But it didn't go that direction. It's just it's just some poor motherfucker who's constantly being tortured inside a stinking Brita picture. Apparently, when they were investigating this SCP, there was an interaction between Dr. B and Agent L. Dr. B, the council will argue for safe classification. Agent L, the council can read my report, sir. Dr. B, this won't even get funding. So is the foundation not going to put a fund for water for this SCP? <laughs> that motherfucker is just going to die. Oh my god. Okay, now this raises the question on does it need to be water or can it be any type of fluid? It specifically I'm pretty sure they want one water the person who's stuck in there. Wait, I, question is how is the being able to survive without food? That that's true. Wait a minute. Hold on. 
<laughs> yeah, I would be willing to guess that this person that's trapped in there is not going to die either way. Well, that's just infinite torture. The thing then. I wanted to bring up is that since this wood is more dangerous than Peter, I believe. Not necessarily. Nope. Not always. It's, it's more. It's harder to like. It's harder to. Those birds, for instance, were classified as Peter. Yeah, like the. the the basis of classification, generally speaking, is um, the box test. If you put it in a box, is it going to stay in the box, then it's safe. If it's going to occasionally try to break out and cause issues, but will otherwise normally remain in the box, it's Euclid. And if it is consistently going to break out of the box or cannot even be contained within the box, it's Keter. And... and if it's it, if it is the box, it's through mile. Yeah, yeah, and if it's um, it, if it destroys the block box and everything around it, it's a polyon. Yeah, and sometimes things are made keter based upon pure threat level, but that's generally not the basis for something being classified as keter. In any case. I don't really think anything about it was modified to cause it to be the same. No. As in the danger level. Yeah. <laughs> a story was added, but I don't think it's gotten more dangerous. Yeah. I, yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so also, could it or not? The thing is, the like final solution. Yeah. But like, could it not be like an actual? Could it be like? Hmm. Oh, not a person in there, like something yeah, else. Yeah, like, like maybe mm -hmm. a. Oh, I see. Okay, wait. What if the like picture is like a person that? Is the person? Oh, and then that's that's and that's why it needs to get water. Oh, okay, yeah, I think that's what it's going for, because Wait. the picture itself will have a heartbeat when it's filtering the water. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, Jerry, you're cutting out. Oh, I was just, uh, just like to look it up to see if I could find any more information on it. I don't think I really realized this. Yeah. Uh, but desiccated human hearts can be removed and placed back in. What the fuck? I don't so, like that. When it doesn't have water long enough, it's basically a desiccated heart that I guess is reanimated once the water's put in there. What? What, what? the fuck? <laughs> this sounds like a Dr. Watertainment item. Oh, yeah, that's my first thought. <laughs> like, that's. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so I don't in it, do any uh, water bearing solution. So if something's not pure water, it can still purify it into water. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, question. Water in it. Question: Should we put this in only one because it it's only a threat to itself? I yeah, I was gonna say I I think that this should just be put into only one. Because, yeah, there, there's only one being being harmed here. And, and it's, it's the itself. picture itself. <laughs> Which is sad. <laughs> like, I I don't see why this was... Again, I don't see why this was ever a keter. I, I think this, part like, of it was changed. Most mm -hmm. likely. It's... Meh. Yeah, but anyway. The next SCP. I, I'm just going to say it's nickname, because... It's funny. 
<laughs> SCP-666-1 and a half dash J. The Roaring Flames of Hell. Nah. <laughs> Eh, I'm gonna like this one. <laughs> Description. SCP-666 and a half. Half dash J is a crab stuffed mushroom entree produced by the Internal Foundation Catering Service Containment Cuisine for the 45th Annual Site-19 Foundation Formal. Roughly 42% of the 1,500 attendees consumed SCP-666 and a half dash J and were subsequently affected by its anomalous properties. SCP-666-1.5-J's 666 effects started to become apparent approximately one hour after the conclusion of the main course, at which time event goers began to complain of slight abdominal pain. By the second hour, many attendees were complaining of significant digestive distress, and all restrooms in the immediate vicinity were filled to capacity with extended key weeks. By the third hour, medical inf- investigative and plumbing personnel were being flown in from surrounding sites to aid in relief efforts. Those who consumed SCP-666-1.5-J uh, say that it ha- has an odd salty tinge to it, likely caused by an experimental salt substitute used in its creation. It has been theorized that this substance is the root cause of SB 666 and a half anomalous properties, although food poisoning as a result of poor hygiene amongst culinary personnel has also been considered. All staff members affiliated with containment cuisine have been put into custody for interrogation purposes as well as the individual's own well-being. When consumed by a human subject, SCP-666 and a half dash J triggers five stages of localized K-class scenarios within the subject's digestive system. In its initial stage, SCP-666 and a half dash J causes a brief period of mild nausea, followed by a sudden and urgent need to relieve oneself. However, the instant before the crucial moment of blessed release, SCP-666 and a half dash J triggers a D K-class stomach shift seizing control over the subject's nether regions and causing a massive shutdown of all the subject's bodily exits. The deep carnal desire for release increases to the point that it becomes downright crippling. Subjects often experience shortness of breath, extreme jaw pain from the coaching of teeth, and mild bruising on hands from putting the rim of the toilet bowl in a death grip. <laughs> After a few- so this is just constant constipation. Maybe. After 15 to 20 minutes of the subject's intestines experiencing a level of containment rivaling that of SCP-106, the subject will experience a brief RK class rupture scenario, feeling a relaxation of the lower muscles, a wave of elation, and a fleeting hope that the worst has passed. Following this, the gates of hell open up within the subject's intestines as Satan himself Violates the subject's anal canal. Okay, I'm not saying that. What? Okay, a sudden SK class scorched earth scenario completely erases the internal lining of the affiliate's digestive tract as unholy murder flame rages throughout a demonic vortex as at a temperature of roughly holy crap on a cupcake degrees Kelvin. Every happy memory, every recollection of peace, joy, or anything other. Then sheer teeth shattering ag- agony is volcanically obliterated in a gastrointestinal supernova of biblical proportions. Subjects may oh, experience blackouts or periods of loss of time during this phase. Their state of being reduced to a terrible haze of a torn tensile sweat, agonizing wails, and desperate gasps for air. Okay, this is just going to get incredibly worse and worse. Should I even continue? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so this constipation, it gets worse and worse and worse. And Does uh, it kill the person? Uh, let me go down. The camera's gonna die of diarrhea, so you can probably die of 
Oh, yeah, but it generally would take a particularly long time to die of constipation. Apparently, they neutralize an individual's infected. Specifically, to have clogs of fecal matter removed from their system. Yeah. Oh, there's... Alright, so they neutralize some of the individuals that were infected by it. So, and they, there's Imagine. also... Um, there's some things that some scientists have said. Popular scientists. Alright. Having experienced both the childbirth and the effects of SP 666 and a half J, I can safely say that I would choose the, the former any day of the week. SP 666 and a half J is like having three babies at once, except that they're all on fire. Also, they're covered in thumbtacks and trying to eat you from the inside out. All the, all while the midwife is beating you senseless with a crowbar and screaming in your ear to push. Dr. Wrights. <laughs> the next one. I, I ordered. I keep the, forgetting midwives are a thing. Yeah. Anyway, the next doctor. It, it was Dr. Wrights. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, next doctor. I ordered the beef entree and therefore cannot give any first-hand account of scp 666 half j's effects. <laughs> However, I can I can say with certain certainty that I've seen keter-class containment breaches cause less pandemonium, pandemonium and widespread demoral, demoralization. It was, without a doubt, the second darkest night Site-19 has, has seen. Dr. Gears. Oh my god. <laughs> This is my third body since the incident, and I still don't feel like it worked its way out of my system yet. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go try for a fourth. Dr. Bright. Oh no. <laughs> what? Why does Bright always manage to get into these types of situations? <laughs> anyway, the next doctor. With every passing week, I lose a little more hope of ever standing up straight again. I have stared death in the face, and he is garnished with parsley. Dr. Kondraki. Oh. No, they fed this to 682. <laughs> oh, no. And, oh, and, no. And the thing is, he said this. Okay, here's what it says. Addendum. Despite objections by the ethics committee, a mule of SCP-666 and a half dash J was fed 682. At, at the apex of SCP-666 and a half dash J's wrath, SCP-682 threw its hands in the air, screamed, Yog, slaw off, take me now. I have no idea if I said that name right. And we only left his mortal coil. Don't tell me this is how it killed 682. It's, it is heavy constipation. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's a little more than that since uh, it literally opens a gate to hell in your rectum. <laughs> yeah. Also, also the la after that, the last doctor um said a very long message about this. Jesus wept. Doctor Clef. Clef uh, preserved it. <laughs> No, I, I don't think he my... did it. I think he just saw saw that hell on oh. hell on Sue. I hear I I hereby propose that Doctor Clef be given uh only this SCP as nourishment <laughs> until he no sees no access his bodily... to the toilet. Yeah, until he sees his bodily functions. Okay, I I want to see why I had to catch myself to keep. They keep on hearing, I'm gonna say it to some people here so they understand why. <laughs> this is way because worse than you think. Because the penguin. Why ruin everything? Yes. Sometimes. Without hesitation. <laughs> That's fucked up. Right. <laughs> 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 now you see why I said that. You see why I caught myself. What the fuck? 
<laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> this, this is not safe for the innocent eyes. Is it safe for anyone? No. Probably so we're, we're, what should we put this at? <laughs> Um, this is one of those... Yeah, like I was gonna say, this is again one of those instances where I'm questioning why it's a keter. Like, yeah, it caused <laughs> destruction that some <laughs> scientists said was comparable to keter ex- ex- containment breaches. Yeah. But <laughs> the the actual object. <laughs> Is a is it's a, it's a meal? Yeah. On a yeah, plate? The actual subject is <laughs> yeah, like like it's not as if the 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 constipation hellhole meal is attempting to force its way into everyone's mouth. It's just mm-hmm. it's 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 effectively the same basic thing as if you were to eat a, a if you were to drink a bowl of soup. And someone had laced it with uh, the reverse of a uh, laxative. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like I, I would say certain groups, because there was a certain group of people <laughs> who had a very bad time with this one. Also, the found- like- people at the foundation created it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it was just by the foundation. Huh? They just wanted to. They just wanted Yeah, they just wanted to use some special new uh, version of salt, and it ended up causing that. <laughs> I like how Dr. Bright kept trying to get more. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Did you not hear me say, I want to go for a fourth? <laughs> no, I thought it was for a fourth body. Oh, wait. For a fourth body. Hold on, let me reread. Why are they so, like, let me... messed up that they took the body three times and they still feel the same situation? We're going from body number four. Oh, yeah, I read it wrong. Yeah, I, I, I was saying about it wrong in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> So does that mean it doesn't just affect like it affect people who's like trapped in amulets as well? <laughs> yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently it affects. No, it's. I think it's less psychological. It would have to affect people on a metaphysical level. Like this thing <laughs> attaches itself to your soul and gives your soul constipation <laughs> from hell. <laughs> Constipation from hell sounds like a really, like, really cool. But there's a band that makes, band like, a really. That there's, there's a metal band that makes, like, really weird song titles. I feel like that band would make a song titled, like, Constipation from Hell. <laughs> <laughs> or or just have a band pilot named. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, That's hold on. Pretty cool band name. I just realized the people who have to do the plumbing as well as clean up the toilets are gonna are, have the worst day of their lives. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. That There's should your... be legal. <laughs> oh, I not. hope those people get paid. They should get paid a lot of money for that. I would assume that uh, working for plumbing for the SCP Foundation pays a fairly substantial amount, considering they would need to keep some level of confidentiality. Uh, yeah. Do you think the government hope, janitors I, have to do that? Uh, depends on which. It 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 depends on which person is in the administration. I was literally, like, just before this, watching a video about uh, this one, you like, very progressive, I want to say liberals, uh, uh, personal top ten worst presidents. And one of the top ones, if not the top one, if I remember correctly, 
was a fellow that was in power during Prohibition, whose name I've already forgotten. And his main renown was constantly having illegal gambling and alcohol drinking parties. During the middle of Prohibition, in the White House and causing Whoa. absolute bullshit with that. James Madden? Oh. No, wait. I don't think it was James Madden. No, it wasn't. Uh, Tom- I don't think it was Thomas Jefferson. Ooh, Probably. Hold on. Did you just get <laughs> Dragon. I don't know my president. <laughs> Dragon. Prohibition. This is turn of the 19th century. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> trying to think of like early presidents and I can't. This is like middle era president. This is like this is literally about halfway between now and when this country started. Yeah, our last president was George Washington. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> uh, I actually I could send you Bright's current location. Don't you fucking dare. That would be illegal. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be a crime. I think that counts as boxing. And I have video, I have video proof, motherfucker. Wilbur uh, Wilson was in office when the deal was passed. When the like, the amendment was passed. Ah, uh, and I don't think it was Will Woodrow Wilson. I know that he was on there for the particular shit with like the first, um. The first movie having been shown in the White House being uh, that one that was made by the KKK. Oh. Was that? I forget. Uh, Birth of a Nation. Yeah, that, that one. Was it. Would, it, I, would it be Calvin Coolidge? Probably. I think I, uh, I would have to know by pictures. I think that would be it. Yeah. Um, this, uh, I mean, uh, how do you spell that name? I think it turns already getting the picture. <laughs> Calvin. Let's look up president's name Calvin. Coolidge. Where do you I need other pictures, please. No. There's a specific image that I just think that why did why did my phone just have an aneurysm? What? <laughs> your phone doesn't uh, commonly have an aneur- aneurysm. This is a perfect. Oh, it yeah. could also be Hoover. Uh, who? Imagine <laughs> Herbert, Herbert Hoover, the worst. Like literally, I I could see him being the worst president. Like holy fucking shit, you're so Imagine you need, ha- imagine having your last name as fucking Hoover. Hoover Electronics. Who? Yeah, that's Have why. Have you ever heard of Hoover? Hooverville or something. Hooverville? Oh my god, I love Hooverville. Ho- Hooverville is like Hoover Town or something like that. Like they were like, they were literally like um, homeless towns that they named after the president. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't Herbert Hoover. I think it was Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway, on to the next SCP and enough persons that did shitty things. Um, this SCP would actually destroy my my state, and it probably is in my state. Oh wait, what? here, <laughs> wait. I, and when looking up Calvin Coolidge on Google, one of the first like drop down commonly asked question things. Uh. Let's see, the, like, the people ask, first one, what did Calvin Coolidge do during his presidency? Second, what president did nothing? Third, <laughs> what was Calvin Coolidge's slogan? Fourth, why did Calvin Coolidge not run again? Fifth, who is the most forgotten president? <laughs> who is the youngest president? And when I go to what president did nothing, whitehouse.gov. <laughs> This is from WhiteHouse.gov. The political genius of President Coolidge, Walter Lippmann pointed out in 1926, was his talent at effectively doing nothing. This active inactivity suits the mood 
and certain of the needs of the country admirably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely sounds like him. <laughs> he most yeah, definitely that's, did it. That's, yeah, it was it was Coolidge. Yep. <laughs> Coolidge? Coolidge? Fucking Calvin Coolidge. I mixed his first and last name, but that oh. is just great. The fact that that last comment was from the White House dot <laughs> All right. Getting getting dissed on over a century after he's out of, well, nearly a century after he's out of office. Now, on to the next SCP. SCP-667 is a a symbiotic pairing consisting of a colony of flowering vines of an unclassified species morphologically similar to kudzu. Designated SB 667 1 and an unclassified species of flying creatures possessing insectoid and humanoid morpho- morphological qualities. Designated SB 667 2. The only known instance of SCP 667 in the w- world is located in a w- wilderness area in the southern or southeastern United States. Approximately Redacted kilometers north of Redacted and covered in an area Redacted squares kilometer. Prior to be trimmed to its current size, forensic analysis of skeletal remains found within SB 667 1 indicate that it was introduced to the region shortly after the introduction of Kudzu to the United States in the late 19th century. That was a fucking terrible idea for, for Kudzu. I oh. fucking hate the ancestors who did that shit. I don't even know what kudzu is. It's oh, literally a plant vine that wraps around all other plants and kills them so it can get sunlight. And it Damn. is it grows a foot like a day. It is is it edible? No, <laughs> it tastes like shit. Like the cat they brought it over because they thought the cows and pigs and shit would eat it. Wait, no, they won't. Wait, it tastes. Wait, it tastes like shit. That doesn't mean it's not edible. Well, I mean, yeah. But who would want to eat it if it tastes like shit? Um, technically, uh, shit is edible certain, if you really try. Certain Actually, what the fuck? People think worse than shit because there are animals that won't eat shit, but animals won't eat it. Yeah, so it's <laughs> actually even worse than shit. Okay, now this raises the question on if Snorlax would eat it. Your dragon, shut the no, fuck up. Yeah, but also Snorlax will eat literally any not Snorlax, Munchlax. Munchlax will eat literally anything. But yeah, like literally Kudzu is like running rampant. It is pain in the ass to handle. Mm. I tell you we're talking about the war for a second. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> the Lorax is a pain in the ass to handle. <laughs> is it the Lorax dead? Like, no, no, no. I was talking about like what Penguin was saying. Oh, yeah. the, the, the Lorax would eat the cuts too. <laughs> well, when you think about it, he is the Lorax, and he does speak for the trees. So if the Kudzu is a threat to the trees, he would probably he would probably cut the Kudzu. Yeah. Honestly, do you think? Do you think the Lorax smokes weed? Probably. What or whatever <laughs> whatever version of weed exists within Dr. Seuss land. <laughs> this is my final send off. Could you this is my final question, Bore, and you have to go to sleep. Could you could you could you smoke a blunt with the Lorax? Shut the fuck up, Dragon. Anyway, Hatchet, uh, since you don't know what kudzu is, I'm going to share a picture of kudzu just being kudzu. Anyways, okay. I have to go to sleep now. Good night. Okay, have good a good night. night. Uh, The image did not load in. I know, it turned to a link for some oh. reason. I'm not clicking on that. Hold on, I can get a picture. The last time I clicked on a link that you sent me, it was a Rickroll. 
<laughs> I can't believe you actually fell for it, though. <laughs> Technically, I didn't. What actually happened was, uh, I it, it was like an article that if you clicked on it would lead to a link rickroll. So rather than click on the article, I just copied the fake article's name, put it into Snopes, and oh. Yeah, all that green wow. stuff is kudzu. All of it. Wow, that is moderately terrifying. Damn. Anyway, back to the SCP. <laughs> you got sidetracked. Uh. So now we under everyone understands what it is now. Oh no. Yeah, bringing Kudzu over was a terrible idea. Where it was, it was generally being, you know, taken care of. Here, we have nothing. King hell! <laughs> this looks like something out of the War of the Rings. <laughs> like, like, if I didn't actually know what that was, I would think it was just an oddly shaped hill. <laughs> now you see how bad it is. Ooh, dead kudzu. That's better. No, it's not dead. It's winter. That's how it oh. It'll be green again by spring. Think Damn it. Just... <laughs> Damn it. Okay, just light it on fire. Burn it. Kill it with fire. <laughs> anyway, on to the SCP again. Eight uh, people live in that house? Too bad. <laughs> Find a different house. Burn it with fire. <laughs> On to SCP. In the presence of adequate nutrition, SCP-667-1 is capable of growing at a rate considerably greater than that of the standard kazoo plant. Samples right. of captivity under ideal conditions have been observed to grow as rapidly as 2.5 meters per day. SCP-667-1 is capable of planting roots in almost any form of soil or soft organic tissue and will grow along or over the surface of any foreign matter in the path of its growth, including trees, structures, automobiles, or animal life. SCP-667-1... Huh? What was that? What? What? It? Goats? Okay, so we need to bring... Thousands and thousands of goats over <laughs> to take care of it. Right, so, okay, so what we need Wait. is goats blank goats. Goat blank Okay, so right. So you're 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 proposing we bring another species. Yeah. That is potentially that is potentially like um what is it called? Invasive. Yeah, they're potentially yeah. invasive. To deal with this other invasive species. That's and definitely not gone wrong in the past. <laughs> I don't think that parts of the United States have natural wild goats anyway. Okay, so yeah, we just, just breed just them and, and then take care of it. <laughs> no, counter Arthur. You breed them, get a modest amount of them, arm them with flamethrowers, and then <laughs> send them. Why would you arm them with flamethrowers? That sounds so like that something can, I would do. So that they okay. can kill it with fire. Yes, <laughs> it all buildings and vehicles in its path. I'm not too well to say. Never mind. Keep breathing, I should be. The goats will scorch Earth. Hold on, I gotta do a message real quick. We need a scorched oh earth campaign God. against Kudzu. <laughs> what is what is this conversation? <laughs> I don't know, keep interrogating them while I type this message real quick. How how does how how does stream chat like my 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 idea for a scorched earth campaign against kudzu all right anyway i'm back now how how does how does the two people in stream chat feel? <laughs> oh no hatch is gonna hate this 
<laughs> I decided at a new I point thing. I, I got a new point thing that says do the lullaby voice for the rest of stream. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway. I, I like the lullaby voice. Alright, I'll do it's a lullaby a voice. Fuck. Hi, bookworm. I hate you. I'm sorry, but I will not be following that rule if it means that we can do a Scorched Earth campaign against Kudzu. Anyway, on to the SCP. SCP. That's what we need. We need a. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. SCP 667 1's primary source of nutrition is derived from humans or other large mammals. Upon encountering a sleeping, paralyzed, or dead animal within its path of growth, SB667-1 will rapidly grow around and through the creature, gradually consuming and metabolizing its remains to further its growth. SCP-667-1's vines, flowers, and roots contain large qualities of alkaline compounds, which render it unpalatable to human beings and other animal species on which it has been tested. Mature SCP-667-2 organisms are approximately 7.5 centimeters in length, with two large wings extending the entire length of the organism. Dissections indicate that SCP-667 Dash 2's internal biology is similar to that of insects of the family fireflies. SCP 667 2's exoskeleton strongly resembles a miniaturized human being, with the organism's thorax being contained within the chest cavity. In the abdomen and bioluminescent organ concealed between the legs. Male and female SB667-2 organisms have been recovered. Female SB667-2 organisms reproduce by laying eggs, which hatch as larvae, burrowing into the soils underneath SCP-667-1 and emerging as mature insects the following year. The current wild population of mature SCP-667-2 organisms at any given time is estimated to be less than 5,000. As many as redacted are believed to have existed prior to trimming. Mature SCP-667-2 organisms dwell ex exclusively on underneath and around SCP-667-1 and subsist by feeding on the nectar produced by SCP-667-1 flowers. When SCP-667-1 growth begins to slow due to deficiencies in its food supply, swarms of 700 SCP-667-2 organisms separate from the main colony and will travel, travel outward until encountering any medium to large-sized mammal in the area. SCP-667-2 swarms are, all, are always active only during the nighttime hours and are bioluminescent, producing a, a highly visible green glow throughout the entire organism. All human beings directly observe being an SCP-667-2 swarm have described a strong hypnotic effect and a compulsion to follow the swarm. When it inevitably results in a swarm leading a mesmerized human to the edge of SCP-667-1's current plant growth, non-human mammals have similarly displayed a compulsion to follow the swarm and oblivious to outside stimuli. Upon reaching the edge of SB667-1, the memorized individual will sit or stand still and continue to observe the swarm until dying of thirst. Exposure or as the result of being engulfed 
by SB 667-1 at the time of trimming skeletal remains of approximately redacted distinctly and identifiable mammals including redacted humans were recovered from the cleared area. SCP-667 came to the Foundation's attention and redacted following a dramatic increase in missing persons within the redacted wilderness area in the state of redacted. United States Forest Service officials identified SCP-667-1 as the cause of the missing persons and upon the loss of several personnel to SCP-667, Dash two swarms contacted the foundation's liaison with within the Department of Agriculture, leading the establishment of the foundation containment over the area. At the time of discovery, SB six six seven one had become highly invasive, and its growth was projected to reach the outskirts of the city of Redacted within less than a decade. Approximately redacted of SCP-667-1 was destroyed by incineration under under pretense of a forest fire in order to reduce the colony size to a manageable level. Examination of the regions indicate that almost all of SCP-667-1's growth had occurred within pe- the past 20 years. The Foundation's current working hypothesis is that SP-667-2 was introduced to the region within that time, and that the development of a symbiotic relationship between itself and SP-667-1 allowed it to begin expanding outward at a significant greater rate than it had previously. I had no idea that that Jiri really enjoyed the lullaby voice. And that's the end of that SCP. But apparently in the Foundation used something that you said. Used flamethrowers to bring it down to size so it become manageable. Exactly. Strap the flamethrowers to the goats. They didn't use goats. They should have. <laughs> what is happening with your goats? So, like, it's obviously very dangerous, but as long as they keep it manageable, yeah, properly manageable, I don't see it getting all that dangerous. Or, like, I, I don't see it going anywhere above city, and even then, I think that's a stretch. Because they're they're doing the correct thing and scorch earthing the kudzu. I think I have problems. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, she doesn't have problems with it. Does <laughs> All right. Uh, Discord name has not changed. Flamethrower goats. Wait. Maybe. Hold on. Catch it. It's... Instead of flamethrower goats, why not incendiary goats? What's what's the difference? <laughs> Practical difference? Like, <laughs> describe it to me. Well, one goat has more fire than the other. It causes fire. So rather than the goat, the goat being on fire, it would be causing the fire. <laughs> The flamethrower growths aren't on fire. They just wield flamethrowers. <laughs> which I think is significantly cooler than just goats that simply cause fires. How would you have the goats oh, use I the flamethrower? Awesome the goat stared at something that burst into flame. 
It just burst. That's, <laughs> that's an S- that's a new SCP. <laughs> Anyway, next SCP. And this one is shorter, so. Well, relatively. Uh, SCP-673 is a mass of organi- organic tissues connected in what appears to be a totally random assembly. These tissues include recognizable structures such as parts, digestive tracts, blood vessels, and brain matter. However, many tissue structures are not identifiable by a composition or purpose. Tissue structures are also noted for their increased size, appearing 20 to 50 times as large as their normal counterparts. Sample tests have shown the basic structure of the SCP-673 to have no known counterpart among normal or- organics and like any form of DNA or normal cellular composition. Tissues appear to operate without the need for any outside stimulation or substance, with hearts beating for days, with no blood or nerve connections, and lungs continuing to expand and deflate even when severed and fully submerged. Tissues isolated from the main mass may grow into surrounding structures using what appear to be tendons or thin bone-like structures to penetrate and spread over walls, floors, and ceilings. Tissues will operate indefinitely with no tissue decay, normally associated with exposed organs. SCP-673 appears to be infectious by any un- unknown means, with physical contact being the only constant observed transmission method. Instances of airborne transmission have been reported but are extremely rare. SCP-673 appears to prefer organic tissue but will integrate with inorganic structures at a slower rate. Testing has shown that, that tissue integration appears to progress along loose guidelines in regards to inorganic structures. Pipes become veins and tracks. Beams become bone-like supports. Doorways become valves, etc. in a slow progression. The shell project has shown that with, with su- sufficient space and able Able amounts of organic materials. SP673 data expunge. So basically, this is just a blob of flesh. It's just moving, but it's just trying to infect everything. It's, it's basically 6 610, but not as powerful. <laughs> it's 610, but less contagious overall. Yeah. I would say. Oh, I I just realized we didn't even put the the, the plant SCP in the category yet. We just we just get the category. That's your fault. <laughs> You're the one who decided to just immediately go on. Because I thought I don't know my brain thought that we already put it in the category. All right. So with the plant SCP, I would say certain groups or city. Um. Ah, you fucking asshat. My cat just walked up to me and stepped on my controller. I'm thinking certain group mainly because they're able to maintain it. Like they're yeah. heavily maintaining it. Like like that's the big thing. If they didn't properly maintain it, I think it could very easily go city. But yeah. until that point, meh. Nah. Alright, so for the new one now. Which is 610, but not as powerful. Probably so. Yeah. But do you know what might be helpful against this gigantic blob of assimilating flesh? What? Oh, Why gosh, you? fucking damn it. <laughs> I want to do two more SCPs and then we'll end stream. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, next SCP is going to be if you don't like things coming out of the human body, I suggest you click off. <gasps> like, 
pushing its way out while sort of still being alive. Like a parasite. If you don't like that, probably should not stick around for this one. As a, as a warning. I probably should have given a warning for the for the, the, the constipation SCP. <laughs> I, think I think all of these streams warrant trigger warnings, but I also assume, generally speaking, that uh, yeah. people who have those sorts of triggers will click on an SCP-based stream, understanding that some of those things might come up. Right. Because the SCP universe is absolutely fucking bonkers. Fair. All right. This SCP is known as SCP-679, also known as I Rot. Oh. Yeah. SCP-679 is a fungal infection of a previously unknown Aspergillus species. It was discovered. Among the local local homeless population in redacted Florida, it is highly infectious through direct contact with the fungus. Though other means of transmission have not been ruled out, in early stages, subjects complain of entopic phenomena. Subjects report seeing tiny bright dots move moving rapidly in their field of vision. This is especially prevalent when sneezing or looking into strong blue light. After approximately one week of initial exposure, the sclera turns black. The subject loses vision at this time, becoming entirely blind. Within a day of this, small ulcerations appear in the corners of the eye. This causes the protrusive humor to begin leaking out, having the appearance of big black tears. Mycella also just pushed through the ulceration. Each mycellum appears a thin white thread coated with slime reaching as long as 25 centimeters. As the ulcerations widen and more of the humor leaks out, more mycella appear. At this stage, the eye begins to rot entirely, a process sped up by the fungus. However, it seems to protect the rest of the eye socket and the nerve preventing infection. By other pathogens, and in eighty to ninety percent of test subjects, at the time, the eyes have gone entirely. The, the sockets are filled with a fungus with a thick mass of micella hanging from the empty sockets. This process takes approximately two weeks from the time the ulcerations appear. Once the eyes are completely gone, micella invade the sinuses where the trigger. Increased mucus production, which the fungus appears to feed on. At this stage, fungus becomes mobile. The individual spreads gaining motility. They move around the subject's face in seemingly random patterns. Once fun a fungus begins moving on its own, subjects report their vision returning. The fungus appears to have photosensitive cells as well as a current poorly understood ability to interface with the optic nerve. Subjects describe normal eyesight except for a much wider field of vision. However, when a human with apparently normal eyes enters their field of vision, subjects experience visual hallucinations, such as fires, dangerous animals, sudden tilts in the floor, that seem designed to drive them in the direction of the uninfected. Once they are enraged, the mycella reaches out to touch the uninfected human eyes. This appears to be a reproductive strategy for the fungus. Curing the condition has so far been possible only in the earliest stages of infection. Once the sclera changes, the only treatment is surgical intervention and colorization of all tissue in the socket and sinuses. Additional test subjects who explored the life cycle and reproduction of SCP-679 are requested. And that's it. So this, the SCP Foundation wants to infect people with this. Uh, well, well, they would be using D-Quest to try to understand it better. 
Yeah. Which, in my mind, becomes kind of a good thing because you need information about something like this. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be put through the filter of the SCP Foundation's constantly fucked up nature of doing things. Yeah. As for this thing's threat level, I don't recall, did it mention uh, how quickly it can spread and, like, its contagion level along those lines? Mm -hmm. So where sh So what do you think we should get this in? Wait, did you... Did huh? you hear me? No, no. Huh? No. I have to ask. I have to ask about like the contagion throughout the network. Yeah, like um, how quickly it can spread. It does not say. Hmm. That's some pretty important information. To it just not says say stages. Either. It just says stages. I I know as much as you do. <laughs> Okay, so assuming that... So based upon the way that they talked about it... Oh, it takes a it week for initial to... exposure. Yeah, and exposure seems to be tactile. Considering the fact that the thing will try to have... Uh, a person that has the, the fungus eyes to try to get into contact with people who don't have the fungus eyes. But besides that, that still seems to be a fairly slow spreading rate. In fact, like, in, unless there's, like, specific yeah. uh, information in the um, addendums, I don't see why this is Keter. Yeah. I would probably put it at certain groups again. Because it, it would just have such a slow spread rate, and all the SCP Foundation would really need to do is a, a, avoid letting people that have the fungus eyes interact with other people, which is, oh. a, I, I, I think, a fairly trivial matter for the SCP Foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like, also the... Person. So didn't it say like people who had like parts of fun that like function less, they got like lighter vision things and stuff? Sorry, uh, what what did you say, Adrian? Um, I was asking if the like about like didn't it say something about like People who had like lower fun like like eyes that like functioned less than the like twenty twenty, I guess. Mm. I don't I think, don't think it mentioned like, it. I think it just said that a person who who was uninfected and went after. Yeah. They didn't say anything about twenty twenty vision or anything like well, that. It was it was like Oh, it, it gave like you a wider a, range of vision, like if when they were able to see again. So that's what. It, yeah. Probably because the fungus is poking out in different areas. Yeah. So. I mean, it's a really horrifying SCP, but I think just certain groups. Yeah. For the last SCP, it's going to be a joke one. And I want to see if you can guess which SCP it's making fun of. Okay. SCP-682-J. Oh. Description. Oh. The bestest lizard ever is a big lizard with big teeth, and he can't, can't die because he can turn into anything. Sometimes he is very small because he can be that because he can be anything. Bestest lizard ever is also very smart. He has an IQ of 
of a bajillion, and one day he talked with a very smart computer, and they were both very smart. <laughs> he oh eats God. anything, and he uses his nose to do special eating so he, that he can eat anything. He can do anything. <laughs> anyway, oh for lo- one, one of the logs, Dr. Dr. Blank. I'm just going to say Blank instead of a factor. Now, why did you kill those farmers? The 682? Rawr! Dr. Blank, if you oh, don't no. talk now, we will remove you from the attempt and place you back into 682. Rawr! Pardon? 682. I will eat you because I am the best, bestest lizard ever. Dr. Oh, Dr. Blank, speak up. Move the mic closer. 682. I am very hungry. Dr. Blank. Blank. That microphone has only so much gain. Move in closer to it. Personnel D-085. The start's messed up, man. Look look at it. He ain't talking. Gaps is in screen. 682. I have big teeth for chewing. Dr. Blank. <laughs> Retreats from the room. <laughs> The next log. The doctors used a crystal on the bestest lizard ever. <laughs> Touched the, the lizard with the, the crystal and it hurt, hurt him, but not too much. What the fuck? The bestest lizard had a crystal going on him. The lizard is hurt. The crystal explodes. The crystal pops into little pieces, but the pieces come, came back together and made lizard win. That's it. That's 682 times J. <laughs> so, this is an easy spoon tier. <laughs> also, in the, in the SCP thing, um, they gave a 682 dash J child drawings. <laughs> That's right. I see. Well, I I think it is fair to say that the bestest liver li- liver <laughs> the what? bestest liver <laughs> is that a Freudian slip? <laughs> the bestest lizard ever uh, deserves nothing but the spood tier in my mind. I'm changing my name. Oh, <laughs> so now we're gonna have flamethrower goats and bestest livers. No, not bestest liver. <laughs> that's the wrong. That's the wrong joke. No. <laughs> bestest liver. I can't live it either. Anyway. Anyway. I guess he's a liver bird. <laughs> Fuck well, off. I mean, I mean, Bright would technically be a reptile if you go far back enough in the family tree, but Fuck off. That's not the same as a lizard. Anyway. Yeah, so any if you can as a chicken, at least a chicken would be related to T Rex. <laughs>